Hey everybody, it's Chucker Conroy. Welcome back to more Chrono Trigger. Last time, we went all across the ages getting all the remaining rewards that our pendant was able to unlock, including a time machine. Though the occasion was not as upbeat as one would expect for getting their first time machine, the situation around it was so tragic and while I can't really say that I'm totally happy about it, we will certainly make the guru proud by using his invention after he's gone. Before anything else, after obtaining the wings of time, leave the room. There will be a new sparkle on the ground after that, and it contains a little something something for you. That's what we're going with. Yeah. Now, if you're gonna get a time machine, you might as well spring for the plush leather seats. Oh, ho, ho, ho. wouldn't have it any other way. We're gonna take off. And we have the ability to travel to every time period seen so far. This can take you to the Cataclysm of 1999 AD. If you go there, it's essentially the same thing as using the bucket. It doesn't differ in any other way other than just convenience should you want to go take on Lavos now. Just thought I'd let you know of that. You do get to see a map of the entire area. And in fact, we've only been able to see 1998 AD in I cannot say that out loud. Wow. I lived this year. What is wrong with me? I should have plenty of practice saying it. I guess you get kind of rusty after 20 years. Anyway, I was saying, you can see the full map of what the area looks like. Because we've only seen it in cutscenes and never get to walk around it, there is some unused data of what it looks like beyond the screens, and I'll show you that to you right now. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's nice they went to the bother of designing most of the map, even if they didn't quite do all of it. And you kind of get to see how the land changed over time, um, as we've heard that it does, because we haven't really seen that so far, that um, that man-made bridge became unnecessary because now we just have a natural one between these two continents. Huh, strange. I thought sea levels were supposed to rise as technology got better. Anyway, uh, we also have the ability to travel to year infinity, the end of time, and I thought we would make our first stop there, as, as the old man guiding us told us about this in the first place. is capable of this. Oh, I feel you, Luca. I already don't like flying in airplanes. I wouldn't like flying through time anymore. We're gonna get off. Unfortunately, we ended up in a time period where there was nowhere for it to land, so I guess we're just stuck in the endless abyss forever. Good thing we took those high jump classes. <laughs> what a convenient way to get out of the situation. Hey. Don't get on me for impossible physics. You live in a floating island that is fully furnished with a street light on it for no reason. Interesting. So he actually completed his wings of time. At the cost of his own life, no less. Why not put those wings to good use and pay a visit to the ancient magic kingdom? Come and see me whenever you have the need. Think of me as your guide on time's road. Oh, Goder, you never let us down. I have the party that I want already. I don't think we really need to talk to anybody. Uh, hold on a minute. What level are we? <laughs> so fun to see them do it again. I'm level 33. <laughs> uh, not as high as I thought. We stand absolutely no chance against this horrific monstrosity, so we're not even gonna try. <laughs> not interested in that, even with our magic armor that we've obtained. For the... Chrono looks like he Geronimo's off the cliff where he like stretches out his arms and then opens his mouth to presumably shout. Can't hear you, but that's what I think. Uh, take off. We know where to go, and it is times of antiquity. You know us, we're like mosquitoes. You seal the portal to other time periods within your era and we just find another way in. I guess it's more like moles and not mosquitoes, but point is we're annoying. That's kind of my thing. Curse is foiled again. Ah, oh, my one weakness. Off switches. Okay. Over here we have the Terra Cave, an area that I haven't been to before. 
Had we come here earlier, this ladder would not be stretched down and we would have no way of getting up, so I didn't waste your time with it. This is Al Getty, the village of the Earthbound. And yeah, this is about as well as they treated that series for a while, huh? We Earthbound ones were banished from zeal because we we are no because we are possessed of no magical talents. <laughs> Weird way to word that, but I guess it's kind of what happens when you go back in time and you're not used to how they talk back then. Many have his line were taken to build the Ocean Palace and none were ever seen again. May I interest you in some goods? Oh, you might. This shop is another one of those stores. Most adventurers are only so lucky to run into one store in an adventure that gives them equipment way ahead of time. These guys have found two of them. These are pieces of equipment you are not meant to have for a very long time. I don't buy that you guys are poor and not as powerful as the people in Zeal. I say you're in cahoots with them, and this is all just a really elaborate scam to get money out of me. With how much you're charging, if you get me to buy one of the, or just one of these items, it'd be economical to build a city in a cave. Just saying. I don't really believe your story. The Zan motto is a good piece of a, oh gosh, how many of these do I want to buy? That's always the question. This does one and a half damage uh, to magical beings, and we're gonna be fighting a lot of magical beings going forward, so I'm thinking probably that for Chrono. That's another reason why I didn't want to grab the Swallow, and it just feels like a waste to not buy it if I pass that one up. It's not necessary to buy new weapons for everybody. I do want to point out the Radiant Blade is stronger than the Masamune, and if you go for that, you want to take the Hero's Badge off a of Frog because then it's no longer useful to you. I'm going to advise against buying the Radiant Helms. They're not that helpful compared to stuff that's coming up shortly, and as you can see, it only raises defense for two of us, and even then, it's not that impressive. Like, two points on Frog, not 2,300 gold good. I chose not to buy the Luminous Robe for Luca because she misses out on the two speed from Tavon's vest, and you know me, speed demon. But one Radiant Plate for Frog. I'm choosing not to buy any other equipment past what I've shown you. The weapons are the most expensive part. That was half of everything I had just to do what I did already. And really, okay, listen, I know it's difficult to face rejection, but there will be other item shops. Just remember that, okay? You're very young. There will be other opportunities to get things. Uh, okay, I equip that to Chrono. Frog has the Radiant Plate. I'm not replacing the Masamune because I'd rather have the higher critical hit chance. He goes down to, I think, 21% if you take it off from 50%. That's just not as good. His regular attack is so good as it is. The important thing is that I can say, Behold the power of the Zanmato! No, that's not the only reason I bought that. Down here. The Queen has installed the Mammon Machine in the Ocean Palace in an attempt to absorb Lavos' energy. But is there not peril in such a thing. The Guru of Life said as much, but it only led to her to it led her to imprison him on the, upon the Mountain of Woe. I fear there's little we can do. The Guru of Life said that young Lord Janus possessed power within him, exceeding even that of Lady Shala. But then the Queen lost her mind, and the young Lord grew to hate the power and all the suffering it causes Lady Shala. Now he hides it, denies it, and shuts it from his thoughts. This guy looks very similar to Doan, the village elder in the future. It seems to be kind of a running gag that there's just this long line of old men that end up leading every village in every time period. We'll keep going down, or Doan. The mud beast den is, da is dangerous. You shouldn't play around there. Was expecting dialect there. Uh, sure, we'll rest here for the night. We're probably already at full health, but too late now. past times, the Enlightened Ones and we Earthbound Ones lived as one. I don't know if there is a connection here, but this always personally reminded me of the book series Xanth. This whole setup here, how they banish those that aren't capable of magic to Mundania. I've never seen this connection made before, but I was encouraged to bring it up by Chrono Trigger Theorists that I contacted about this. They thought it was interesting, and I just kind of wanted to hear what you had to think about it if you're aware of that. This tunnel connects to a mud beast den, and beyond the, the mouth of the den lies a giant chain that anchors the Mountain of Woe to the Earth. Before all else, save your game. I recommend the party that I have at this point in time. Don't be caught with your pants down, even though Ayla's not wearing any and neither is Lu Wow, we're only one for three on pants when I'm saying that. I'm making bad analogies. Go down. There's a sparkle giving a strength capsule. I know just the lady to give that ticket to, and that is Ayla. Now prepare yourself.
These guys are mud beasts. You attack one, and its attack power increases. Not exactly what you want to see, huh? They start out very low and aren't really all that strong. I'm just going to make sure there's nothing to gain from charming them. Present. Rainbow! Yes, there is! What am I saying? Of course. I'm going to wait to attack them just out of trying to be smart, trying to be safe. Uh, and we're going to get another one. This is what it was. I knew that there was some enemy coming up that you could steal better helms for than that rip-off shop was giving you. Attack power increased again. I guess they don't really take kindly to us taking off their clothes. Who does? And maybe Napalm. No, they're not close enough together. Nobody's close enough together for me to do that. Come on. Ayla hasn't done Tailspin yet. That is an AoE attack. It strangely uses Ayla's magic stat because I guess her ass is just that magical. Had to go there. 705 damage still does a lot. It has an extremely high damage ratio to make up for Ayla not having a strong magic stat. It just kind of furthers that if an attack is non-physical, then it counts as magic. Don't go up. Heal before anything else. I'm saying that a lot today. I'm kind of choosing my words the same. I need to stop that because uh, catching yourself on word repetition is one of those things that you do when you do voiceover, but not in any other situation. Except whenever your friends are like, bro, we need to have an intervention. The way you talk sucks, which... I don't know. I, I have friendly people around me. That doesn't happen too often. More mud beasts! Now I'm just sounding like I'm from prehistoric times! I'm thinking maybe the AoE effects could go for that. Oh, we do have Fire Sword 2, which I don't believe that I've used. It's as it says, it makes Kronos Fire Sword into an AoE attack. Ooh, I killed one! No! I only needed three at a time. It's not that bad. Oh, uh, wow. I thought. I thought they had a little more health than that. I didn't think that we'd kill them so easily. The Rainbow Helm halves light damage, though it's weaker than the Guardian Helm. Okay, so I actually need even less. We can replace Tabon's Helm with that, and we can also... Yeah, we'll give that to Ayla. Sounds pretty nice. And, uh... Sure, we'll equip the third one right now before I get a chance to forget. That could go on... Marl's equipment is woefully out of date. It's plus 15 on her. Or not. It's plus 17 on Robo. Plus 12 on Frog. Uh, Robo, just because he's a tankier guy. You're not getting through here. Oh, boy. This battle. Ugh. I hate this fight. I don't use the word hate for very many things in life. I think it's very unhealthy. But this friggin' fight. This is a fight that I've known people to lose and get stuck on, which how often does that happen? The secret to this fight, if I can give you any advice, it is that they are weak to Hypno Wave, one of the few bosses that is. You noticing a trend how whenever a boss sucks, they're weirdly weak to Hypno Wave? Yeah. Uh, we're gonna grab a Mermaid Helm. Now I feel even less bad about the fact that I missed out on that. And the Mud Imp, believe it or not, is the real boss here. He's just pelting you with crap, and whenever you whack him, Oh, no, he's not doing it right now. Okay, never mind. Oh, uh, we'll go ahead and just charm him, I guess. Yeah, he's healing up the others, and he's just generally causing lots of trouble when the other guys, you think they'd be the real boss? No, he's the real nuisance here. Get a speed capsule. Okay, good. At least his existence meant something in the grand scheme of things. Um, I don't want to attack here. Um, I think we're just going to go for a regular fire sword one. You see there that he just kind of pelted that guy with a rock? He attacks them, and they counter you. That's why I was getting so pissy about him even being here at all. Uh, maybe a... No, not a tailspin. I want to wait for the Hypno Wave here. Yeah, and he gets on them and rides them into you. And If you're not controlling... The... If you don't have this fight under your control, you're not using Hypno Wave, the amount of times that you get countered and just the frequency he attacks you in, it can get kind of rough. It doesn't seem like it would be, but I think that's just because I have the right party for it. Uh, we've charmed everyone, so I'm thinking maybe... I don't want to attack them all because I don't want to wake them up. Uh, we'll do Tailspin on this guy, sure. And then Luca can use Fire on that. He just keeps waking them up over and over again. Blue Beast has already sustained some heavy damage. He's almost a 3,000. There's the counter. Just riding him like a jockey. And I guess just because this fight's very slow and we're going to be wh whittling him down for a while, believe me, this goes on way longer than it should. I've seen some of you, not not all of you, but 
at least enough of you that I think it warrants bringing up that for those of you that didn't grow up with Dragon Ball, you find Akira Toriyama's art style kind of off-putting, and I didn't really personally think of it, but it kind of, I can kind of see it. I grew up on Dragon Ball, so for me, when I played this for the first time, I'm thinking like, oh man, like a game made by the Dragon Ball guy, awesome! And I thought it looked really cool, and the anime cutscenes just kind of brought me back to growing up on the original Dragon Ball, watching Z from beginning to end, and loving every second of it, and just being so into it like all the other kids at my school were, but he does draw anime not quite like anyone else does. He has a unique art style, and I can see that if you're expecting anime cutscenes to look a certain way, then maybe it would look off-putting to you. It doesn't to me, but what I didn't realize, it was actually a commenter by the name of A-Squared that made me aware of this, and I thank you for that. They brought up that they like the sprite work better than the official artwork, even though it's clearly based on the official artwork. Uh, there we took him out, he has a weakness to fire. Uh, as you would guess, the um, other one has a weakness to water, but we don't have that in our party. So I think we're just gonna attack with all we have. He has a resistance to fire. Uh, maybe, a, maybe a falcon strike? Actually, yeah, we'll hit both of you. Now that we don't have to worry about elemental weaknesses and not having to worry about getting overwhelmed by them being awake. Um, but what I was saying was, this comment brought up that they like the art, the uh, sprites better than the artwork. And even though the sprites are interpretations of the artwork, I noticed myself saying things like, you know, I don't like Ozzy's artwork, I don't like Slash's artwork, I thought they looked way cooler with uh, back when I was just interpreting their sprites the way that I thought they looked. And I've noticed that I've said that a few times, and after it was pointed out, yeah, I can't help but agree. I. I like these mud imps, probably because they just don't verbatim look like Garlic Jr. They look like they have a bit more of an identity. Hypno Wave you just because I can on Lucas' turn, I guess. I think that's not really gonna do any good. It doesn't really seem like, uh... Nah, it doesn't really do much. That guy's not even asleep. Doesn't have the Z's coming out of his head. Uh, we'll go for Frenzy again. This is pretty well under our control. Just throw him up in the air, hit him on the ceiling, and then hit him on the floor when he comes down. Frenzy! Uh, probably one more hit. Can't go for a fire sword, unfortunately. This actually is a good example of something that I feel about this party. I maintain that every single uh, character in the party is good, but I kind of feel like Luca is the most situational out of all of them. She hits her extremely strong with her fire damage. It's just that... If the enemy walls fire damage, what else can she really do? I'm just kind of making her the healer now that Hypno Wave doesn't mean anything to us. And For a magic attacker like herself, it does feel like kind of a waste where Marl is able to heal on her own merits and not in any other way. Uh, mid ether on Chrono. Ayla, can't believe I'm having you drink a high ether. Didn't think I'd be using it on that. MP is actually not that bad. Uh, yeah, I guess... Maybe protect. We haven't gotten to use that yet, and he is a physical attacker. Chrono's getting banged up a lot, so why not? Oh. That's what that looks like. You get an aura around yourself to show that it's the case that you're equipped with it. It is the same as the item variant that I showed you earlier. Just kind of recapping on that. Cleave you. Still no. Ayla, just regular attack. Come on, you can do it. 217. Still no. Uh, use protect on yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just running out of ideas here for things for you to do. I'm sorry, I can't help it. Falcon Strike, come on. If you're healing Ayla and Chrono at their maximum speed, they can attack together. Let's just get them synced up. Kicking a rock at him. I feel kind of bad for these things, how they have to be a minion of such like a little annoying enemy. Oh, didn't mean to boulder toss there. Okay, well, uh, I guess if they're out of sync again, Chrono, go ahead and frenzy it. Or it can go down, yes, all right. Maybe, maybe single target fire on this guy? Oh, he's asleep. God, he's asleep, she's asleep. The Mud Imp has insanely high defenses. That's why I wasn't taking it out first because the other ones can be taken out relatively fast and he's just kind of a troublemaker for you. Um, panacea, yeah, Panacea. From here, I guess, uh, we'll just go for the drill kick, and that'll just be a strong attack that we can hit him with over and over again. Luka can use fire, and by spamming that, we should finish this up any time. 708, good, okay. His defense drastically drops after you take out the beast. It's not a hard fight, as long as you keep it under your control. It's just an extremely time-consuming one. He also counters with healing every time you hit him, so I kind of also don't like taking him out first for that reason. I, I guess maybe you could. Maybe it's not that bad. 
I've been a little bit self-conscious because there was a boss fight a little while ago that I should have done a different way that I was just simply unaware of, but this didn't give us that hard of a time. I was able to take it out, no problem. Didn't even take as long as I thought it would. 2060B, 2600G, and a speed capsule too. Can't forget about that. The mermaid helm is just as strong as the Rambo helm, but has water damage. That'll go on Luca. And the Rambo helm can now go to Marl. Because Frog was the only one who didn't get something new. Here, you can have the speed capsule. It's definitely not wasted on you. I chose to do this fight again to show you the triple tech that the three of them can do together whenever you attack them and they're all awake. That's why this fight is so rough if you don't have Hypno Wake. Just because it didn't really make a whole lot of sense because I didn't really show it, that's how it is. With that done, we arrive at the chain that we have heard one person tell us about. I was gonna say heard so much about, but that's not exactly true. Welcome to the Mountain of Woe. Next time on Chrono Trigger, we go looking for the Guru of Life. See you guys then.